Hello, and welcome back to the Fitigration Society. My name is Dale, and I'm an immigrant. And as for you, I shall call you Mini-Me. <laughs> I love that little guy. Anyhow, welcome back to the studio. We've done some more changes, of course. As you can see, I uh, had, had to rearrange things again here, hoping to get some more room for guests because it was kind of tight, but working on it a little bit at a time. And anyway, welcome back to the show. I'm glad to have you here. And today we're going to talk about learning the Finnish language and, and doing it as a part of Finnish society, being, a, you know, trying to adapt to the culture and learn the language and the history and doing the best we can. And I've come up with four, three or four good methods of doing that. And I'll tell you about each one of those one at a time and kind of why the things are difficult for English speakers, just going to flat out tell you, it seems to be a pattern. And I have talked to people from all walks of life and who have had anywhere from two years to five years to 20 years here in Finland as Americans, Amerifins, I'm going to call them, uh, fin, uh, Finns of American descent, Americans of Finn descent, one or the other. But anyway, that's the focus of my channel and that's the people I'm trying to help. But here I am trying to learn the, the uh, language and doing that as part of the official uh, integration program as, as they have it here. And I'm in a, a very intensive course that is 15 hours a week and I'm finding it very difficult. And, and it seems to be a pattern is with the other English speakers as well. So what we're going to do here today is talk about the kind of the methods that, that I, as an individual, trying to learn the Finnish language, you know, well, uh, have adapted. And the first one I want to talk about is, uh, everyone's heard of it, it's a uh, language app called Duolingo. And I'll tell you why I like it and, you know, really why I think there, there, there are parts of it that are useful. It's not the perfect weapon. It's not going to, especially with the language as difficult as Finnish, not going to get you where you need to be by itself, but as a tool to train yourself to get used to the idea of studying the language and to, you know, pick up that is a good habit. And it does that. It does a really good job of reminding you to study your language, practice, practice, practice every day. And in addition to that, it also uh, is a good vocabulary builder, uh, frankly, and it will, it will expand your vocabulary. in a lot of ways that uh, you won't get in, in lots of other ways in society. Unless you speak the language, which is, again, one of the other points I want to make. So anyway, Duolingo will kind of get you on a schedule. It'll work you through lessons, progress-based lessons. You will learn uh, lots of vocabulary. You can pick up, you know, a thousand, two thousand, three thousand words in a short period of time just using Duolingo, nothing else. Some of the voices are really good. Some of them aren't so good. I think they use AI or something. And Finnish is just not one of those languages that you can kind of sneak by using AI on because it's just too heavily nuanced, which they call it the language ear. And that's one of the things you're going to need to really focus on. But anyway, so there is a free version of Duolingo. It's on the web. It's easy to get. You can get it on your Android. You can get it on your iPhone. You can get it on your PC. And Pretty much, if you're trying to learn Finnish, you should have it everywhere, frankly. And I would advise people who are willing to, you know, want to invest in learning the Finnish language, especially to just go ahead and buy the super version right off the top. It's not that expensive. It really isn't. It's a great deal and you can share it. You can have a family account and share it with, I don't know, five or six people or something like that. And it's ridiculously cheap. But I know as a company, they are kind of struggling and they could use support and the way you support people or things that you like and what things that work is with money. So, you know, I encourage people to do that. Just start right out, just throw some money at them. It's like 70 bucks or 70 euros for six people or something. It's ridiculously cheap. So anyway, uh, if you don't, they have a, the free version is really good. It is quite frankly, it is, and it works. The issue is I don't want people to get started on one version and then try to switch back and forth. It just, it won't work, especially if you spend too much time on the free version. You'll just find the super version distracting, which is why I advise people to try it. Just try the super version first. And no, I'm not being sponsored by Duolingo in any way. I just have, have understand that they're having difficulty and they have a good mission. People should help them, quite frankly. Just so do that. Anyway, 
Also, my second biggest go-to source, quite frankly, has been YouTube videos by other content providers. And, and you really, oddly enough, you really have to search them out. They're not just like someone hasn't created a big giant list, which they should have. By now, the government should have done it. But somebody should have sifted through all the material that is good and put it in playlists that are useful for English speakers. I mean, that's kind of obvious to me. It's the first thing that you, that you see people doing or trying to learn a language is they pick up a translator of some kind and try to find out what that new, you know, difficult concept in a foreign language means in their own language. It's the very first thing they do. We know that. It's obvious. Yet, the, the, the task of doing all that hard work in translation is being left to the actual student in the midst of the process that they're trying to learn uh, this new language. And the explanation for that is, well, it's, it's difficult. It's equally difficult for everyone. And I try to make my point, just because something is difficult for everyone does not mean that it is easy for anyone. So with that said, I frankly have to, has to go out of the classroom and onto the internet, onto the YouTube uh, platform, I highly suggest, of course. There are some content providers. There are quite a few channels, but I've kind of narrowed down to a few of my personal favorites. And right now, one that I'm finding especially useful, which I'm going to link in the description, is something called Suomen Kursi. Kursi, excuse me, kind of say that all right. So Suomen Kursi, and she has put together some really effective PowerPoint lessons covering all the basics and really simple. And it's in Finnish, but it's simple Finnish, and you can put your subtitles on in your native language, and I think you can do 20 different languages. So you can't beat it. And the, the lessons are understandable. There's, they're labeled by difficulty. So A1, there's an A1 list, there's an A2 list, and there's even a Puhikeli list and, you know, all sorts of different things. But those two basic playlists alone are enough to keep you on her channel. Now, with that said, again, her channel will teach you the Finnish ear that you need, but you're still going to need the information. You're going to need the grammatical cases and all that kind of stuff explained to you. And the way you're going to do that is you're going to find it. It's available in English or with subtitles, your own language. It's absolutely necessary. And I have found, again, uh, Suwam and Kurasi, the newest one. I also recommend Cat Chats Finnish. I, I've linked her and, and uh, talked about her before because she speaks very good Finnish and very good English. I mean, just perfect in either side. You could just task her with any language and she would just nail it. Whereas a lot of other very good Finnish English speakers, they, they still have their charming Finnish accent. And I, I totally love that. I think it's beautiful. But uh, Kat, um, Kat, uh, Katya manages to pull off a, a perfect Finnish accent and a perfect English accent. So anyway, she will help you with English lessons in Finnish. She will teach you English, uh, Finnish concepts and grammatical uh, cases and so on and so forth. And she will do explanations in English and it is isn't just an invaluable resource. Another resource I find highly useful is a channel called Her Finland. And it's run by another charming uh, native Finn speaker, but she has a really neat accent too. And she's very, uh, very natural and very uh, straightforward on her uh, channel. And she tells you a lot of really interesting kind of cultural concepts about Finland that if you're trying to integrate successfully, you really should find a resource like that. And I highly recommend Varpu and her channel. I believe it's Varpu. Um, so anyway, her Finland also linked in the description. He also has playlists and does a lot of little short, interesting stuff like the word of the day, the word of the week, and so on. Uh, so let's see here. And the reason for that is is twofold because the uh, some of the classrooms I I don't think do a very good job of advising people and turning teaching them how to convert the the grammatical concepts they may not be familiar with in their own language into the the highly complex Finnish grammatical structure and that that kind of connection needs to get made in your head at some point before you can actually start speaking the language well that's just a fact it doesn't matter which language you're trying to learn and uh, speaking for myself i don't have a lot of uh, explanation that i don't understand english grammatical concepts i know how to use them but i couldn't tell you the names of them and and that's kind of necessary especially with a language like finnish that has i, I believe you know 
honestly, what is it, 17, 27? It's just some uh, some obscene number. <laughs> I'm not going to say obscene number, but it's a, it's a big number. And even for the smart people, it just takes time. And the, uh, the thing about the language school, which is the third piece of the puzzle, by the way, just banged on microphone. One second, please. I'm going to take a reindeer coffee break. Staying highly caffeinated, I think, is one of the Finnish secrets to surviving 30 below uh, zero temperatures. Well, that and, you know, beer and other other sorts of alcohol that people are imbibing. It is the season to be jolly, especially here in Lochte, Finland. Okay, so third point on the, the three points of the stool here, the process trying to learn the Finnish language well and, and quickly and properly. You want to accomplish all those goals at the same time, and that's the problem with a complicated language like Finland, like uh, Finland, Finnish. So here we go. You need to uh, understand the, uh, the, you need to, the study habit needs to be established and maintained. That means Duolingo. You get that hooked up, pay for the premium version. It's not that much. You share it with friends. They don't have to be related to you. It just says family plan. It works so well. It's awesome. It's a great gift for people too. And they don't even have to know you're getting a benefit out of it. So just for that reason alone, hey, hey friend, I got you a free subscription to a super new language. Here you go. Boom. You can learn Nigerian or ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs or whatever else they have. So just do it. You have YouTube videos and, and good content providers. You're going to search them out and you're going to make playlists. And, and like I said, Suomen, Suomen Kursi, she has already created playlists. So it's an invaluable resource. Just don't waste your time. Start listening to her stuff right away. So third part of the stool is the language school itself, which is the immersion method is how they're going to try to teach you. And that was explained to me as uh, Finnish in Finnish. And the, the idea of that works really well is in your case. So that's, that's a, a goal. That's an ideal situation. However, I, maybe it's just me, but again, many, many English speakers from different countries and cultures have reported the same level of difficulty in trying to, to understand what might be completely new grammatical concepts and, and only being explained, having those explained to them in the Finnish language, it just doesn't make you help you make those connections. Like, for example, today on Suomen Kursi, I, she, was it Suomen Kursi? Anyway, I think so. She came out with a rule that I understood that on uh, type two verbs, there are no KPT changes. That simple. In English, that stuck with me instantly. I'm still telling people about it today. Did you know that? Wow, dude, you never have to worry about KPT on type two verbs. That's awesome. But that was never covered in class. In a language I understood, if it was if it was given in Finnish, it went right past me and it would have saved me a lot of time and trouble, is all. Is all I'm saying. And, and again, one of the content providers I'm always talking about, uh, Katya from Cat Chats Finnish, she said that her mother had the exact same experience with the integration program. 20 years ago. So if English speakers have been have been basically having the same issues with the instruction process for the past 20 years, then maybe it's something that needs to be improved upon is all I'm saying. It, it would seem like rational people would would reach that conclusion. By now. So maybe with a little bit more focus and, and in, in me fairness, if the idea is, well, we need to be equally cruel and equally difficult for everyone. And that's why we don't do uh, instruction in native languages and we don't do uh, in translations and so on. If that's the case, well, there has to be a point where reason overwhelms the, uh, the, the trying to create an equal level of misery instead of trying to create a, an equal level of progress is, is my point. And if here I go kicking my mic again, getting all excited. If the idea is progress and, and quickly doing it and helping people move forward with something they're trying to learn, then if there's a better way, then we might be open to the idea of adapting it is all. And unfortunately, or fortunately, no matter which how you see it, 
English is a very common language among many, many different cultures and names. At least they have something that helps them bridge the gap between learning the Finnish and their native languages it might be completely different. So, for example, in my class, we have a Romanian, we have a Hindu, we have uh, some other Arab nations represented in our class. So it's, it's, whereas the rest of the class is, is highly monolingual, again, if the entire class isn't finished, they're, they're, it's true that they're not giving any individual language any kind of advantage, but they're really not helping anyone as much as they could either, is all I'm saying. And again, English is spoken by as, as many as 40%, was it 50% of all immigrants speak some English? So... Maybe we can try to help people out. And, and again, there are so many monolingual uh, kind of groups of immigrants that are coming through integration now. For example, um, there's a lot of Ukrainians. More than half the class is Ukrainian. Why shouldn't they have a, an instructor who teaches them Finnish in Ukrainian? I mean, it makes sense. There's enough of them. They could put 16. There's at easily 16 they could put together in a single class and they would learn so fast. And they would support each other and they do a great job with that. But likewise, there are groups of English speakers that most likely should be grouped together and instructed in English and Finnish. Have we tried it before and, and we just, we've, we've written doctoral dissertations about why it's ineffective? Or is it something we're just simply reluctant to uh, have the, uh, the, or the hormones, shall we say, the the ovaries or the whatever uh, or organs that make you strong to try something new that might be more effective is all. I mean, we're, we're adults and we're fins and we're not dumb. We are uh, supposedly the, quite the opposite. So why aren't we acting like it? Especially when it comes to efficiency and, and money. It's not like we have, you know, buckets of euros just kind of sitting around to throw at language training and integration that is ineffective. Or if it's not ineffective, it is a high degree of. Am I still kicking this thing? Probably. It is a high. It is a high degree of inefficiency. And again, when it comes to English speakers specifically, people who have the English language specifically from the UK, specifically from the USA, they all have been reporting for decades the same issues. Then there's a high failure rate for English speakers. When it comes to taking the uki. Did I say that right? Did I pronounce that right? Uki? I couldn't find the statistic anywhere, but I suspect it's easily 80% on the first try. 80% of, of Americans specifically are reporting a failure rate on the uki test the first time around. And that is very discouraging. It is just, there, there's so, something wrong with that. They, they should be doing better. And a lot of it is their, their motivation. I would admit that. I don't think a lot of them are really as, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> as committed to focusing on learning a language as they should be. And maybe there should be better incentives to get people to focus on stuff. I mean, you can you could motivate you know a donkey in a couple of different ways. You can you can give them a carrot, or you can whack them on the ass with a big stick. Right? Those are kind of the two function. Those are the two methods we use to motivate animals. We kind of understand that when it comes to animals. But human beings who are really just more advanced and hairless apes, as I think Desmond Morris used to call us, hairless apes, we can also be motivated with carrots and sticks. And surprisingly, most people understand, and so do most animals, that they are better motivated with, uh, with carrots than they are with sticks. They don't like it and they're ass whacked. Who does? But people do like being handed carrots or candy canes or whatever else, you know, incentivize them. You know, they should do the same thing with students. They should, they should uh, give you uh, some kind of bonus. They should divide your, your allowance for going to school up into the days you actually go to school. Even if you're, even if you're sick or out or whatever, beyond a certain amount, they should have a bonus of some way to, uh, in other words, if you put someone through 14 months of training and they learn nothing, how much of a return on the investment has there been? Whereas if you can, if you can take some portion of money and do, devote it to not, them not needing another year or two or three of finished instruction to get where they need to be, or they give up, which is worse, you know, then that, all that first amount of money that was spent, well, it just was wasted. 
and, and I, I really don't see an intelligent uh, race of people like Finns, an, an intelligent culture of people like Finns, you know, who are supposed to be hardworking and intelligent and, and have Sisu and, and do things because they're right, not just because someone's watching or because someone's telling them to. I mean, that's me, as I understand Finnish culture. I mean, someone put a comment, tell me, am I wrong? Am I wrong? If you're a fan, if you're a born and raised, born and raised blood fan, which you're, you know, you're greatly proud of, and I get that. Post me in the comments, tell me I'm wrong. You know, am I missing something about Finnish culture? Are you actually uh, devoted to the idea of working harder than you have to and spending more than you have to and getting less than you should be? I mean, clue me in. I mean, I'll I'll get with the program if that's the way it is. I'll try. And and maybe I'm being sarcastic. Maybe I'm not. But you, you can't get better as a people, as a country, as a culture, by not seeking improvement, by repeating the mistakes of the past. It's just, that's common sense, right? It's common sense. It's not speculation. And if you understand that, then you know there needs to be a movement towards new ideas and new ways of paying for those ideas and new ways to motivate people and again finland is small enough that efficient programs can start working right away improvements in the way things are done can happen immediately it doesn't take 5 10 15 years to get a, a new efficient way of doing something to work and Finns aren't wants to sit around and waste time. I know that. <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna get in trouble for this next thing I'm gonna say. Whoops, I know there are some Finnish companies that have recently opened um, factories, shall we say, production plants overseas, including in the United States. And I'd really be interested in knowing Somebody let me know, are the ones that are working 40-hour shifts in the United States at the, at the manufacturer, are they producing as much as the Finnish crews are in a 30, I think it's a 36 and a half hour shift. I mean, I'd be interested. That, that's totally unrelated to today's topic, just we were getting into Finnish culture. But I'm really interested in knowing if, if the deals that the U.S. workers are getting are as good as the ones the Finnish workers are. And if you are not kind of supporting your brothers overseas, if you will, and making sure that, oh, they get five weeks a year of vacation, oh, they get this and that, because I highly suspect they're not. And that's one of the things that, that uh, a good friend of mine used to complain about back in the US. She worked for an uh, international company. They have lots of offices right here in Finland. And their employees get much better benefits, much better work-life balance than the ones in the USA. You know, and the money really kind of washes out depending on how you look at the taxes and the benefits. And I would argue mm, you're still getting a better deal here because you have universal health care. But again, unrelated to the topic, just Finnish culture, uh, updating. I learn it all the time. I'm interested. And I, I think that's why I'm here. I think it's a better deal as a, as a small or medium-sized fish here in the right size pond here in Finland. If Finland needs you, you know, why aren't you here? You can help build this country. The one you're in now is, is kind of doing the, the, the swirly swirl as far as the, the world is kind of looking at you like, wow, you need to get right with the Lord because it's coming, it's coming at you. Finland, Finland is on a straighter course. Finnish, Finland has its difficulties, but it's, it's a, I guess in, if you were looking at a corporation, he would, he would say, well, it has a very flat structure. There's only, you know, three levels of management. Whereas in the United States, the corruption goes through the city, and then it goes through the planning commissions, and then it goes to the county, and then it goes to the state, and then it goes to the federal government. It's just Everybody is taking a slice of the pie so that Americans now are paying twice as much for the, the for example, I believe they pay literally twice as much for the health care that isn't as effective as the countries that are spending on universal health care as far as outcomes and and the stuff that you hear oh well it's it's you have to wait for an appointment and so on well you know what you got to wait for an appointment anywhere i guarantee it i got some medical care in the u.s i waited 
to what? If it's, you're not dying, you can wait. It's it's pretty simple. It's efficient. Don't complain. And and I I've seen people who needed help get help immediately. I've seen, I've seen two ambulances two excuse me two ambulances show up to pick someone up. That's how fast they are. So don't give me the oh if you really need something you're not going to get it because that's not true. Anyhow. Thank you very much for joining me here at the Fintegration Society. If you are a student of an integration program, especially an American speaker, I would love to hear from you. You can call in. Uh, we can get you on our little guest channel over there where Mini Me has been chilling the whole time. I hope he's been paying attention to the show because there's a test. It's a grilly. <laughs> a hot grilly, as they call it. Anyway, uh, my name is Dale, and uh, I've been your host here at the Fintegration Society. I'm very glad that you have joined me if you have and I hope you've learned something in this and if you can teach me something and finish especially as an English speaker you, know, you have a recommendation for people if you post it in the comments I will pin it I you know we're all here to learn and share knowledge so help us out of course your likes and uh, especially comments for some reason I don't know how they, they figure the YouTube algorithm I don't understand it but I understand that comments are, are helpful to the channel even if you just say hi or thanks or you're full of it or whatever it is, you know, something in, in Finnish that's colorful. <laughs> I would love to hear it. I'm sure you've got something for me. Or if you want to be on the show, you're, you're welcome to. If you want some information on migration consultancy, you can email me at fintegrationsociety at gmail.com. Fintegrationsociety at gmail.com. And I'm very glad you shared this time with me tonight. Join me the next week. We'll have more information that obviously the in language training and integration topic is going to be ongoing for quite some time. I'm in a 14 month program now and I still have a good nine, 10 months to go. So ideally I will at one point do a show that's pretty much all finished or as much terrible finish as I can muster because I'm, I'm not going to let this beat me. It is discouraging to fail and it's it's not something that intelligent people are proud of. Fins are intelligent people. And so are you, because you're tuned into my channel. If you do subscribe, it also helps the channel. If you have ideas or topics for the show, or you want to be on the show again, please uh, leave a comment or drop me a message. And let's see what else. Oh, yes, I need to sign up and say I uh, one day hope to lose. <laughs> excuse me. One day, hope to say to you personally, Terve Tuluwa Suomen, which means welcome to Finland. <laughs>